Thank you, Robert. Uh, thank you to Sarah and Andrew and Amelia for the logistical awesomeness. That was unprompted clapping. It means it's genuine. Um, OK. So I'm going to talk about building opentreemap.org. Uh, Robert said that this has been going on for several years, and that's true, uh, that we've had tree maps for several years. I'm specifically going to be talking about building uh, our cloud service version uh, that started less than a year ago um, and is up in beta right now. Uh, and I wanted to talk about two things. Uh, two aspects of community. Uh, this is the landing page for opentreemap.org. And there's a word there that's, that's both underlined and bold. So it's super important. And let me, let me uh, it's super important. Um, so together is really important. And uh, I sort of stretched that word a little bit uh, and sort of changed it into community. Um, so OpenTreeMap is built with the idea of allowing organizations to share tree data that they have, and then trying to build a community around improving and expanding uh, that tree data. When I say tree data, I mean the location, species, size, et cetera, of street trees, uh, particularly in urban areas. And so I want to start by showing off a few features of the application. Uh, that try to achieve that goal of, of building a community around tree data, and then talk a little bit about the, the tools that we use to build it, which coincidentally have a community vibe also. Um, I should take a, I, I want to take a quick pause. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Ah. So, so Dana called me out, and I play the drums, so I was too shy. But, uh, but I, I, uh, I had a dismemberment, dismemberment plan song at my wedding. So this is actually very relevant. Oh, it started at the beginning. Oh, I had it all queued up. Anyway, there's, this, there's a great refrain around here. Oh, you can't really hear it, but hold on. This is worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. So she's right, it's the greatest song. Oh, oh I have to stop. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I would not stop unless I had something else to do. So, oh wow, it's awesome. Okay. Uh, so, organizations that, oh, I restarted, uh, my clock stopped. So, oh, there's another clock. It's very short. Um, <laughs> <laughs> organizations usually come to us with a, uh, a set of data already that they've collected somehow, uh, but they don't have a great way of, of showing it to the community that lives next to the trees. What is it? Is it trees that live next to people? Trees that live near people. Trees that live near people. That's our focus. Um, uh, so this is a map that has uh, Philly tree data in it. This is kind of a sneak preview because you can't actually see this on uh, opentreemap.org yet. Uh, we will be moving all of Philly's data over to open dot, opentreemap.org soon. Um, <clears throat> but uh, one of the first things you'll notice uh, is that we can pull from this tree data interesting data using uh, software. We can aggregate and compute the ecological benefits of all of these trees in the city. Um, and as a side note, that those calculations are actually powered by a separate open source uh, piece of software that we pulled out of OpenTreeMap uh, that we called EcoPy. Uh, so other developers can use, uh, this is actually a wrapper around data and calculations provided by uh, the USDA. Uh, we need an interface to use it in our application, so we broke it out in a way that, that uh, any application can use the same calculations and the same raw data set uh, to build up uh, calculations like the ones on the right. So uh, the big picture is cool, like seeing these huge, gigantic numbers. Those numbers are probably completely bogus, so don't pay attention to them. 
but they are really big in, in the aggregate. Uh, but people generally are more interested in their local environment. Uh, so people are, have been trained to want to fill in addresses next to a map. Uh, Google has sort of spread that far and wide, and it's in everybody's pocket now. Uh, so this is a very common thing. And so if you have a map application, you sort of are required to do this. Otherwise, people will think it's broken. Um, so when you search for an address, you, you end up at the address. Um, and that's cool. You can see the trees around you. Uh, but we're still seeing all the aggregate data on the right. Uh, so in order to slice up the data by regions uh, that might matter to someone, for, for Philly, we have a set of neighborhoods. Um, We've implemented some uh, fuzzy searching in those neighborhoods, uh, which is good. Uh, it gives people more correct answers more often uh, when they're searching for something. Uh, this is also really tricky. This is the same box where we search for the address. Uh, it's kind of hard to do this neighborhood matching and this random address searching at the same time. Uh, so, but that's a really important uh, little bit of UI. Uh, so it's worth putting the time into when you're building these types of apps, making that easy for people. Uh, when you search for a uh, neighborhood, uh, we highlight it. And we actually also apply a filter to reduce the set of trees uh, at the upper left and the benefits on the right to show just the trees in that region, uh, to show people the local area. So, so this is great. People can see the trees near them. Um, if they want to improve them, the trees nearby where they are, uh, we want to provide, uh, we've given them easy search tools. We want to provide equally easy uh, data editing and data adding capabilities. Um, this gets a little trickier because people aren't, are very used to searching for a map these days, but they're not very used to adding data to a map and editing data on a, on a map. Uh, so you have to be a little more careful about uh, giving them easy-to-use tools to do that. Uh, so if we go back to uh, our map right around the meeting house, uh, where are we? Oh, yeah. So we want to fix up one of these trees. Uh, so you can click on any of them. You get a, uh, a pop-up. Uh, and there's buttons on the pop-up that'll take you over to a page that has just that tree, and it's a big, pretty page, and you can edit whatever you want. Um, but to reduce the friction, we concentrated a lot on, on using the space we already have on the right area and providing this, uh, this quick edit button that lets you edit the uh, data about a tree while you're on the map. The idea being is that you could go along your street and fix up all the trees without ever leaving this page. Uh, this assumes you're not carrying your laptop down the street. Uh, we do have some styles in this, in this uh, page optimized for, for tablet-sized screens. Uh, so you could actually carry a reasonable object down the street and fix up this data. Um, the links on that pop-up uh, do take you to the nice, pretty tree page I mentioned. Um, we did some work over in the panel on the left to uh, encourage people to improve the data, again, trying to, to build up this, uh, the uh, community around trees. Uh, we have these bullet points and this uh, thermometer that sort of show this is what the data we want. It's specifically calling out, well, it's calling out photos for pretty, but it's, uh, it's also calling out uh, diameter and species. Uh, those are the key factors in calculating the ecological benefits for a tree. I realized I'm looking left because the podium is looking left. So I'm very sorry to all of you. Um, <coughs> uh, so yeah, after we edit, if we do some of these edits to the tree, uh, the bar fills up. We get closer to our goal of 100%. Uh, try and encourage people, uh, give them a little goose you know, in a game-like thing where you can get these achievements. Um, so that's editing existing trees, some data that came in from an inventory. Uh, we also want to encourage people to add data to the map and make that easy as well. Uh, to do that, we've tried to put an add tree button or link, sometimes more than one, on every page of the application. Um, so there's one up there on this page. If we go to a completely different page, uh, if we go to a user profile page, uh, in the upper right, that link is still there. Uh, hitting that link 
uh, we'll jump you back to the map page and encourage you to add a new tree location to the page. Similar to the editing workflow, uh, the action takes place on the right-hand side. Uh, we try to emphasize that you can move this point around on the map. There's that little halo around it that acts as a handle. Uh, but even if the, the user doesn't grasp that right away, we've given them search tools to use the GPS if they're on a device. Um, or to actually search for an address to get them close enough, and then they can uh, fine tune the position of the tree after that. Um, so I blew through just some features of the app that we really focused on trying to encourage people to contribute, not just give organizations a way to show off the data they have, but to actually improve it. Um, I want to spend my last couple minutes talking about actually how we built this. Uh, I'm not going to get into code. I'm just going to sort of talk about some tools and practices that we use uh, that are also sort of around the idea of promoting open source. Uh, I like to think that OpenTreeMap has hundreds, perhaps thousands of developers um, because we're sitting on top of the work of a whole bunch of people. And it's all really great. Um, the most important to us is uh, GeoDjango. Um, which is really more of a name than anything else, because uh, Django itself uh, has really great first-class support for doing uh, geographic work uh, baked right in. So you install the default Django, uh, ignoring the somewhat complicated additional tool setup. There's no additional pieces of Django that you need to, uh, to pull in in order to get support so that strings and dates and points and polygons are all exactly the same. And you can uh, search on them and filter on them. Uh, and that gives us a real boost. We get to think a couple levels above uh, the geographic stuff when we're building our application. Uh, Django itself is a web application framework written in Python. Um, Python is a great, simple, and flexible language. Uh, it has probably one of the best open source communities. Uh, again, partially, and credit goes to Dana for that, uh, for running many Python events. Um, we, <laughs> we take all our code and we stick it in, uh, stick it in GitHub. We're, uh, it's almost as if we got to, well, no, I'll say we did get together and plan all this beforehand in a long, drawn out meeting, um, but we didn't. Uh, and, uh, GitHub's another amazing community. Um, we don't just use GitHub as a code bucket where we just, here's everything we're doing and, and have at it. We, we also use it, we put it to full use by actually managing our workflow. Uh, uh, we plan milestones and put issues uh, into GitHub and track them and talk about them between the team members. Uh, and we also use it to keep our, our code quality up by uh, using pull requests and doing code reviews so we can comment on each other's work. We don't have to sit down with each other uh, to make sure that we're all going in the same direction, uh, we can stay in sync sort of asynchronously by looking at each other's code. Once we have everything built, uh, we need to make sure it works properly off of the machine of the person who wrote it, uh, a common software development disease. Uh, we use uh, a, continu a continuous integration tool called Jenkins. Um, Continuous integration just means every time you change the code, you do some work. Uh, in this case, we, we run all our tests, and we bundle up our code, and we package it to get it ready for distribution. Uh, this is what our Jenkins dashboard looks like. Uh, it's constantly li listening for changes and kicking off jobs when we change things. Uh, it, pro it catches problems as soon as possible. Uh, and that's, it's always easier to fix something right after it broke than leaving uh, for the day and coming back tomorrow and not knowing why it's broken. Um, to do all this work, uh, Jenkins is more of a manager type. Uh, it doesn't actually do a whole lot. Uh, we wanted to take the setup of all the services that power OpenTreeMap and uh, write it the same way we would write code. So we adopted a, uh, a server management provisioning tool called uh, Ansible. Uh, and some of you may have heard of Puppet and Chef. Ansible lives in that same family. Uh, we find it to be a lot simpler. It's also written in Python, which we really like. And uh, 
It's a great way for repeatably, not just deploying your infrastructure to run the application, but also writing it just the way you would write code. So we write up files that describe exactly how our server should be to run our application. Uh, we hit the go button, and it makes our server the way we want it. If we hit the go button again, it just won't do anything because it already set up everything it needs to. Uh, this is incredibly val valuable and has allowed us to move way faster. Uh, we use the same scripts that we provision the live open opentreemap.org site uh, on our local development machines. Uh, we actually use a tool called Vagrant, uh, which is a layer that sits on top of a virtual machine tool, uh, like a virtual box, uh, that lets you run a virtual machine in sort of a casual, disposable way. Uh, so you make a little file in your project that says what type of machine you want. Uh, again, you hit a Go button. Uh, it creates that virtual machine on your workstation and then runs our provisioning script in a development mode on that machine. So instead of getting a dozen uh, Amazon AWS servers, it all goes onto this one virtual machine. Uh, because our development environment is nearly identical to our production environment, the chances of there being a discrepancy between the two uh, are greatly reduced. And so there are uh, a lot fewer surprises when we go to production because we're dealing with something that's so close to the real thing. So that was super fast. Uh, if you have any questions or want to talk uh, about any of this stuff, there are a couple other uh, Open Tree Map guys here. You can talk to us. Uh, I just have to show this slide again because it's really important. Um, and uh, I'll reiterate what Rob said. We are, we are hiring. We need a, a couple people on this team to make sure Open Tree Map keeps running. Uh, so if you're interested, I made up a little short link. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Zero.